Brandon. It's good to be back with you. Today I've got a statics problem involving an elliptical load distribution across the cantilevered beam. Um, I picked this one because I was originally trained as an aerospace engineer and oftentimes we'll assume a wing has an elliptical lift distribution over it. So in spite of the fact that it's a little bit more of a complicated uh, distribution than we normally see in these kinds of problems, this has a really uh, clear practical use. Now I set the half span here, the length of the beam, to be 2 meters and the, the lift at the root there to be 50 newtons per meter. That size is this for something like a UAV or you know, radio controlled drone. Um, smaller than a man carrying aircraft probably. I don't know how you get a man carrying aircraft with wings that small that would still fly. So anyway, we're going to go through GFSA format. Right? So I've got the given right there. Well, I need to have find. We're not, we don't know what we're finding, we don't really have a problem. So I want us to find is the moment at the left end here. That's actually would be called the root by the aerospace types out there. At the left end of the beam, there's going to be a zero moment at the right end of the beam. So GFSA, so the S part, I write solution. Okay, and uh, all, since all I want here is at the, the moment at a single point, I really don't have to draw a load shear moment diagram. Right? What I can do is just start calculating moments, but because this is such a complicated shape, it's not one we can divide up into rectangles and triangles and that kind of thing. We're going to have to use calculus. So let's just face this head on and do it. I'm going to drop a C-bomb on you here. Okay. There's a C-bomb. It's calculus. There's an integral sign. There you go. I'm going to drop a C-bomb on you. So, seriously, this isn't that hard to work with, and I'm going to show you how it works. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this, even apart from drawing a load shear moment diagram. The first thing we can do is note that if you integrate the load across the beam, you're going to get the shear, and if you integrate the shear, you're going to get the moment. So we can do this as two successive integrals or there's a way to do it with one integral. So what I want to do first here is I want to show you how to do this with two successive integrals. We'll call that maybe method one. Make sure I stay in frame. Okay. Um, v of x equals the integral of f of x. And all we're dx. All we're doing here is we're take we're dividing this up into a bunch of little boxes of height f of x and width dx. And we're adding them all up. Integration is just kind of really expensive adding. Right, the only real question here is what do we want our uh, endpoints to be on our integral? It's pretty obvious. This one better be B because that's where you run out of wing. But what do you put down here? Normally you'd say, well, I'd put 0 down here. If I put 0 to B down here, that's from one number to another number, 0 to 2, that's going to be a number. I don't want a number. I want a function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put an x. What that does is that calculates the shear at any point because it adds up the load from any point x. Let's just say x is right there. x from 0 out to the end. Okay? That's, how, that, that's what that means for us. So that's going to give us a function. Shear v is a function of x. Okay? And the next step we'll do, let's see, 1 continued I guess, um, is then say m of x, moment of x, at, at, at any point x, is the integral from x to b of v of x, okay, dx. Now, having done this, this is a pretty complicated integral. I actually wrote it out. Uh, I, had, I wrote it out. I had MathCat figure it out for me. The integral's about that long on the page. The answer's about that long. I'm not going to write it all out, but trust me, it's, it's uh, fairly involved. And to integrate that again is going to be really tough. I did this in MathCat, so I never did actually explicitly figure this out. I had to do this numerically, and that's the way to go. What I found out is V0, is, uh, shear at the root, that's going to equal the total lift, okay, the total upward force added up across the wing. That's what this is right here. If I put a 0 to B, I'm going to find out the total area under this curve. Okay, That's going to be this, and that turns out to be 78.54 newtons. Okay, So the next thing I can do is put zero in there and find out what the moment is at the root. And let's see, the moment at zero turns out to be, let's see, 66.67 newton meters. Okay? This is how to do the answer one way. Now, I didn't actually write all this out, so I'm assuming we're doing this on a calculator or MathCAD or 
Mathematic or something. We're having some software do the number crunching for us. Alrighty, so that's method one. Now method two is to do this and say this method two there. Okay, I'm going to actually draw my load shear moment there, or my uh, free body diagram. I didn't draw a free body diagram before. I'm not. I'm not sure that was. I wasn't quite following the rules there, was I? Okay, here's a free body diagram, just to make sure I won't go too far without drawing one. There's the reaction moment, and there's the reaction force at the root, where I've cut it free of the structure. Well, if I want to figure out the moment due to a little uh, one segment out of this, what I could do is this. Okay? I'll even make that dotted. All right, that little little bit right there, that's part of the area under the curve, okay? Its height is f of x, and I don't know where that point is, so I'll just call it x. Okay? The height of that little tiny box is f of x. What's its width? Well, that's dx, all right? So if I want to know the moment due to that one little box, and let's see, the moment at x, that do that little box at x, is f of x dx, all right, um, times x. There we go. So I've got a force times a distance, and that's the force right there, okay? Because the units here of that are actually in newtons per meter, and that dx, it's a little tiny number. We don't know what it is, but we know it's a number. It has units. It has units of meters. So newtons per meter times meter equals newtons. That's my force, and that's my uh, distance, I guess we'll call it, distance or arm. Okay. Well, if that's if those, the, the x times f of x dx gives me the moment due to that one little segment, all i got to do is just add them up. And remember, integration, just expensive adding. So I can do this. get myself out of your way here in a second. Okay, what I can do is say distance times force, f of x times dx is a force times a distance, add all those little dx's up, cross the wing from 0 to b, and I'm going to get a moment. Okay, I'm going to get a number now. And that also turns out to be 66.67 newton meters. Okay, so that's more direct than the other way where I integrated force to get shear and then integrated shear to get moment, right? Now, it turns out there's actually one more way that is, I'm not sure you'd do it this way, but you can, okay? Moment's a force times a distance, right? If I know the total force here and I know where the centroid is, let's, I'll draw the centroid up here, I'll call that x bar, that's the x location of the centroid. If I knew what that was, I could multiply the total area times the, the, the centroid. So I'll actually call this method three here. All right. Total force times x bar is going to be my reaction moment. That's legit. Well, how do I find total force? Well, f total, that's just v0. We already know what that is. Okay. We can figure that out if we want. We know that is, uh, let's see, what did I say it was? 78.54 newtons. Okay? Well, I guess I believe that. So what's next? How do I do, uh, how do I find x bar? Well, x bar is this. Okay, it's moment arm times area integrated, or moment arm times force integrated across the uh, beam and divided by force integrated across the beam. We already know these. That's V0 and that is uh, M0. We've already figured all that stuff out. You figure it out, you get 66 point, or not 66, you get, uh, let's see, right, there's a 0.849 meters. 
and it turns out 0.849 meters times that equals 66.67 newton meters. So there you go. We've gone over three different methods for figuring out that reaction moment there. One thing I didn't do. Remember GFSA, given fine solution. Never wrote down my answer. So let's do this. Write it out correctly. There we go. Finally, I got it. So there you go. Figured out the reaction moment due to a fairly complicated lift, uh, load distribution across the wing. And we, this could be anything now. Now that we know how to do this generally using integrals, this could be anything. It's not so scary anymore. The process is going to be the same even if we change the formulation of f of x. We've done three different ways, and we come up with the same answer all three ways. The answer is 66.67. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.